how to make this jumpsuit so basically i'm going to be starting with just a basic bodice and we're going to turn it to um halter neck line so i have the front panel so basically what i have here is just my bust divided by four plus extra one inch my bust is 42 plus one inch of seam allowance and then from my shoulder to my waist is 17 i have extra one inch of um half an inch for joining the bottom half an inch for joining the top so to turn this to a halter neck, what we're going to do is we're going to start from this point now, the tip of this shoulder, and we're going to blend it into the armhole. So if you want at this point, you can cut it off before we move over to the body. So this is what this part looks like now from the um, halter neck. So this is it here. So now the next thing I'm going to do is to the back panel, I'm going to join, you know where the one inch of this one and the one inch of the back is going to meet. I'm going to fold it right and then i'm also going to join it to the body here as if like i've joined it to the cloth you understand so guys once you've removed this part remember we cut off this part to form the outer neck once we've removed this part so the next thing we're going to do is to glue the back to this side right and then once that is done guys another thing you're going to do is to go up to the back here to replicate like how her own is you don't want much fabric at the back do 1.5 so that you can just so you come up by this zipper part by 1.5 and mark it half an inch to join it to the bias half an inch to join it to the pants you're left with half an inch in between but i want to have more fabric than that so i'm going to do two inches because this is for a bigger person so i'm going to come up two inches on this zipper part right almost like let me roll it in a line so you guys will see so i'm going to use half an inch to fold it into bias half an inch to join it to the pant and then i'm going to be left with one inch of hair all I, that's why i went ahead to cut this part out first so that i can figure out how to blend in my curve so what i'm going to do is it is um this down depends on you you can pull your ruler down a little bit more to form your curve you can pull it higher than that so you but if you're looking at this lower part you see where my two inches is so i'm just going to make sure my ruler is there and then pull this here just to continue this this angle that i'm already forming here you understand so now all i have to do is just to hold it firm and then continue this angle here. this is now going to be my back panel because i want to have a little bit of fabric coming up here so guys if you don't want it that way like i said you can always go back in because me for now i'm going to still go back in i've already drawn this out just to give me the line but i'm still going to go back in now and bring this down more because i don't want it this high and then blend it in now and it's looking big but remember half an inch of this now the lower part here half an inch of it will still go into my pants half an inch at the top here will still go into my body so i'm going to be just left with small space in between right so now now that it's done i'm going to go ahead and cut this out and just cut out a precise that bodies before you start to split it in and cut out the bust here you can just go ahead and and use that and and then that way you don't have to insert it that but for me i'm going to be using um just ordinary one so now I'm, i have to insert my dart so i'm just going to come down here maybe by seven inches down on this line seven inches from the peak of this line here you can just try to insert a dart before cutting this part off and if you see my shoulder it would have still fallen in place somewhere here so now all i have to do is just to come down here it depends on you the length you want your dart to be so come down here maybe in an angle three inches or so and then i'm going to mark half an inch at the top here and then i'm going to mark half an inch at the bottom here now i form my dart and then remember i'm still going to have another dart coming here from this part here which is going to be two inches before my bust line and then i'm going to mark half an inch on this side this is just your basic body right? so you see these two that they are already forming if i curve it this way now all the way to the top then i have a princess that you see so you can form yours if you want it this way so now let me go ahead and cut this part off this is out 
and this is the bodies we are working with separate it so that i can trace the back panel separately like this and then i can trace the front panel separately like this you understand so these two i'm still going to trace it one this one on a fold and then just cut two pieces of this one so guys you see i've traced this out and watch i used i i i cut out lining also for this but you can just use buyers but i need to use linings for extra thickness to the fabric you understand so and then i also notch where my darts will be my my darts at the bottom and then my dart by the side you need to notch it on the cloth and also notch the dart at the back of your cloth because you need to know where the placement of your dart would be so you see i cut two pieces of this out you see and then i also have it in lining and both of them are on a fold the front pieces of the cloth and then the front pieces of the lining what it would look like and then let's move over to the pants so to cut the pan basically what i did here is i cut out a fabric because i want the pant length to be about 18.5 or so that's the length of the bottom part but what i have here is 20 inches because i still need one inch for folding the edge half an inch for joining this to the top so now so guys as i folded the fabric into two the next thing you have here is just my heat measurement divided by four which is 12 and then i added extra one inch of um uh, seam allowance and then three inches for the crotch guys the total i have here is just my hip divided by four plus extra one two three four four inches more if you want you can do extra five inches more if you want it to be free but like i like the one on the thumbnail you're using like a chiffon or you're using like a crepe fabric. divide your hip by four add for your ease because you, you will see that the pant is not fitted on her but i can't make it too big with akara fabric because the akara already has starch but if you're trying to use like a crepe fabric a lighter fabric add more room to your hip measurement so what you're going to do if you're using a lighter fabric is instead of your hip divided by four plus one for because my one is for the seam allowance do plus one for your seam allowance and then plus one for your ease you understand so extra two inches before you even get to the crotch measurement you understand that will be on the hip so what i'm going to do now is just to come up on the hip measurement divide my hip by four mark that plus my one inch of seam allowance here mark that and then i'm going to leave extra three inches for the crotch which is this here and then you're going to bring down this same measurement on the crotch line because i have my waist to my hip at 10 my waist to my crotch at 12. if you want to know how to get your crotch you can do your hip measurement divided by four whatever you get to be the length your crotch so i'm going to also bring down this measurement here and then the next thing i'm going to do is just to take it up also here top. and then i'm going to use a straight ruler to connect it all the way to the top and then once i connect it now what the next thing i'm going to do is just if if i was making it on a lighter fabric and i added extra ease to it like i added extra two inches to it when i when i get to the waist i'm not going to put that in you understand you don't need the ease on the waist because already we're just transferring the basic measurements we have here you see this measurement i have here normally what i would have done is just to go up to the waist divide it by four mark it give it a curve but i'm not doing that because if you notice on the pants you see that it's pleated like it it has a pleat to it so to to, to get that pleat i can't use my waist measurement plus just maybe you can do your waist divided by four plus extra like two inches or three inches but just to make it easy for you to calculate just transfer your hip measurements to the waist and then pleat the waist enough to get what the waist would normally be right and then it will not give you this split going down so before we get to that let's go back to the crotch here so for this crotch here how you're going to get what will be here is just take the basic measurement you have here which is your hip measurement divided by four divide it by four again so like i have 12 i'm going to divide it by four again that will be three so if you see here you notice that it's three that i have here for this crotch from this point here to this point so i'm just going to go ahead and give it a curve like this and leave it so guys this is basically it my pant is ready all i have to do is just to go up here and cut from here and then cut out the crotch i'm not touching the bottom if i was making it in form of a pant i will leave it all the way to the length you're going to go straight but you see i'm using 20 inches here because i'm making it in form of a short but if i was making it in form of a pant it would still be the same thing it's just that my fabric will go down up to like 
40 inches, 41 inches, but you still keep your hand straight that way. All, all you're tampering with is just this upper part. The bottom part, you leave it flat because it's a palazzo pant, you understand? So now that this is done, we are going to split open this side so that we can have our two front panel. And then we are going to fold our fabric into two so that we can cut the back panel. So guys, for the back panel, as we've cut the front now, the back panel, all you have to do is to take the front the way it is, place it on your back, and then you're going to make sure you have about three inches here. If you're more on the smaller side, do two inches. But this is for a bigger person, so three inches here. The next thing you're going to do is on where the part where this waist of the front panel is. Let me rule a line so you're not confused. It. So this is where the waist of this one starts. Let me just rule a pink line so you will be able to see this is just the waist of the front panel if i raise it up you see that's the line where it is what i'm going to do is i'm going to go in from the beginning of where this curve is like you see the curve where this angle is where the curve of this is i'm going to just take it in by two inches and then that two inches i took it in by i'm going to now bring it out back here extend it out here which is the two inches i'm adding back now so what you're going to do is you see that from here now, you're going to measure from the waist in front, which is 13, which is actually what we got for the hip. From this point of the waist in front to the other side of the waist, you see? Just measure what you have for the front of the waist. Just bear it in mind. Mine is 13. What you're going to do next, some people like to take the crotch measurement here, which would have been 3 for me. That's this extension of the crotch, 3 inches here, and take it up here. But I'm going to just do 2.5. Or if you want, because it's a jumpsuit, you can do three inches so that it's free on your waist because there's no band on it, like if you're making a pant. So you can just take that and take it up here. I'm going to mark it because at the end of the day, half an inch of this here is still going to go into the seam allowance to join the back panel, you understand? So that's why I took it up three inches. And then after that, you're going to connect from this point here to this point here which will still give me that 13 now is where you're going to insert that 13 inches you got from here to here i'm going to try to find a way to fit it from this point of this angle to this here this is just us bringing up the back panel because remember the back of your pants is supposed to be higher because of your butt at the back especially for someone that even has a bigger butt so it will be better for you to take up this measurement here and put it up here you understand so now that this is done the next thing we are going to do is just to connect from here so connect your back this way and blend it into the curve of the back of your pants. You see, that extension of three inches we made here, I'm now connecting this here all the way to the top. So this is the back of our pants. Then after that, you're going to just add in one inch by the sides of your pants all the way going up. Guys, like I said, if this was a longer pant, you would have still done the same thing. Take it up and then coming up here, find a way to blend it into the side of your pants. You see? blend it away because you know up here is extended by two inches but coming from here is one one inch so maybe just find a way as you're coming in once you get to the hip try to just blend it into these two inches extension here so that's basically it for the pants guys if this was a longer pant the only difference now from the one on the thumbnail is just the length guys it's just the length so guys because we are also going to have a zip i'm going to give it an extension of one one inch my zip is going to be about 10 inches length so I'm going to stop at 9 inches here, from this part to 9 inches, and then extend it by 1 inch in between here. This is going to be the, is for the, the seam allowance for my zipper. But you see what my back panel looks like. I'm going to cut from here all the way, cut this and then down. So guys, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to find where your dart is. My nipple to nipple would have been about four in um four inches. Like my nipple to nipple divided by two would have been four inches plus extra half an inch. So let's say my dart would have been somewhere here because remember this is not my waist measurement. So there's no how I'll just find the center. It would be better for you to just find the center and that will be where you're going to put in the plates. So let's say this is the center now. I'm going to fold it into two. Yes. From here to here, find the center between the two. And then you're going to form a pleat. Form a pleat this way. And make sure that when you form that pleat, just hold it down. And then I'm going to fold this other one. You can even go ahead and iron it to be safe. You see, I formed one pleat on this side. Go to this other side. 
form another pleat again just like that and then after this you're going to keep adjusting this pleat because it might not be your waist you understand you because you still have to measure it to make sure that it's your waist measurement that you now have here because remember your waist is still going to meet the top body so one thing you don't want to do is for this to still be wider so once you finish you're going to measure fold the weight the zipper allowance and check if this will fit your waist measurement divided by four plus your one inch of seam allowance that's what you're going to measure so mine is still big so i'll still go back in again and readjust it you're going to keep adjusting it until you have just your waist measurement divided by two sorry your waist measurement divided by four plus like extra one inch or 1.5 inches because remember you need seam allowance on this side and seam allowance. that's how you're going to form this pleat that you have on that one the same goes for the front of the pants you see this is what we have here guys like i said too small and the hip is too big if that's the case one thing you can do is also just do and that you don't want the pleats to be too much you can just do your waist measurement divided by four and then add the amount you think will be enough for you to form your pleat if it's three inches you add it and then add your seam allowance whatever is left so let's say my waist is 8.5 that's my waist divided by four would have been 8.5 now right so let's say i go ahead and mark that and then i add three inches for making my pleat and then i add one inch of sewing all i have to do is just to basically curve this into the hip and cut it out if you want to still give it that shape and just make it or if you want just use your hip measurement on the waist part and then for fix everything into into a plate you understand so just like i just said now find halfway through between from this point to this point which will be somewhere here for me and then i'm going to open it up and then start forming my dart so i already know fold it in here instead of forming a dart what we are forming now is a pleat so fold this one in this way facing you pin it down form, form another pleat pick up the fabric fold it in again pleat it this way and then once that is done this on this side you measure it again and make sure that you have your waist measurement divided by four which is 8.5 for me because remember we are doing this why we are dividing by four is because we are working with one side this is another side and then the back has two pieces right the four of them are going to come together to make the waist of your pants so that's why you have to divide your waist by four so and then you check so my waist divided by four will be 8.5 right so which would have fallen in here which would have been here if you look at it now it's 8 point sorry 8.5 which is here and then I still have about 1.5 inch of sewing allowance, which would be okay for me because I just need half an inch to join the, the center and then I need the other one inch for the side. So this is how I'm going to do it. Just take this to the sewing machine this way and then use half an inch to join this center part all the way to the top, half an inch. But the side you would need about one inch, especially if you want to add a pocket to it. So 1.5 would be the perfect measurement to use as the ease right so now i'm going to go ahead and start coupling mine together and then i'll bring it back so you guys would see so guys this is it here as you can see i've joined mine so guys basically you will take it back and join the side to the side and guys another thing i noticed is that if you want before you even start tracing your own when it comes to this dart at the back you can just fold it away fold the dart right you can just fold this dart away and then trace your pattern Fold the dart and then trace your pattern. That way you don't have to put in the dart anymore on the cloth, you understand? So just fold this dart and then trace exactly this shape, you understand? So that's what you're supposed to do. If you want to, or you can wait and then just cut it like that and then trace your dart on the cloth itself, whichever one you want. So you see, once you finish that, join your, use lining to turn over this here. Join the, this top part, fold the lining into two. Join it to the back fold the join this side of your fabric to the lining join this other side right and then you flip it out and then put in your dart you see where my dart is before you now join it to the bottom part of the cloth close the side close the side use that zipper allowance you have here to put in your zip you understand and then this is it so you see my pleats here you see the pleats on the back here 
if you look you'll see there's a pleat here there's a pleat here guys if you feel like this pleat is too wide there's another way to make the pleat smaller you can just stitch it down the way it is now you can just sew it down like one inch down and then your pleat can start somewhere here you understand if you still want it fitted on the waist you can just sew down on top of it the way it is now go to your sewing machine sew it down on this side and then sew it down on this side like one one inch each and then your pleat will start somewhere here the same thing goes for the front if you feel like it's bulking up in front another thing you can do is sew the sew the that close like just continue a stitch down this way continue a stitch down this way then your pleats can start opening up from here if you feel like the opening is too much so that's basically how you do this here so now let's move over to the neckline so for the neck this is what we what we still have here what i'm going to do is you're going to go now measure around your neck what your total neck would be right measure that and then you're going to cut that out giving it one inch at the end one inch on the other end and then you're going to take this here find halfway fold it into two the band fold it into two it depends on you the length you want to do but you can do about you can do about 3.5 inches so that when you fold it like i mean 3.5 on when it's open or better still do four inches which is better four is the perfect one four inches so that when you fold it into two you have two inches here two inches here and then you're talking half an inch on both side so by both side i mean you're going to you have four inches open this way talking half an inch here talking half an inch here and then take this here put it in between use this one to close it up like this and then sew it all the way to the end like this you see making this color on this side all the way to the end also on this side making this color to the end and then you put in a button um the iron hook thing on both ends here you see and then close it up so as you're coming to this end as you're using half an inch to sew it coming to this end as you're getting to this point now you continue with that half an inch but this time around there's nothing inside of it you understand because on in this front part this will be inside of the band but coming to this end now there's nothing you just close up the band continue that way until you get to the end you fold it and then sew down your iron hook here on both sides so i'm going to do mine now guys but i'm thinking i'm not do it that way so what i want to do is to have mine tied at the back so instead of having like a band that that I can just close up, I'm just going to make mine a tie that just tie and then drop at your center back. That's the one I'm going to do. And then guys, if you look at my own, you'll notice that this is bold. It's like one inch or 1.5. Like I said, if you want yours shorter than this, you can do that. You just have to reduce the length. Go back in, trim it, trim it until you get what you want. If you want one inch, trim it down. Just consider half an inch of joining your lining to the cloth and half an inch of joining your the body of the pants to this. And then whatever you want to, to have left here is fine. If you want, if you don't want to have anything left, just make sure the band here is one inch. Use half an inch of it to go in here, half an inch of it to fold in the lining. And then you will not have anything. You might just have half an inch at the top here. You understand? So that's basically how you do this. So I'm going to go ahead now and put in my band so guys this is it here guys as you can see i went back in the that i put here coming down seven inches was not enough so i had to lose it come down in and put in a bigger dart my advice would be to use a princess that it would be better to navigate this because at least that way you know how much of it to take in but just know that you will definitely go back into taking more that because of the how the the dress is made and it doesn't have any back panel coming in so it makes this part of it extended even more so no matter how much that you put in you still have to wear it and then taking in more that because of uh, the like because of how long this side is so guys after that this is the back of the pant like i said before i tried it on and then i saw that this part is a little bit pokey because my fabric is um Akara and it has so much starch to it. But if this fabric was like crepe, it would just fall, just fall like that. But because of the starch, it's poking like it's giving it excess fabric on top of my butt. So I had to go back in. You know how I told you guys you can stitch in your your dart to come down a little before you now let it like this um this pleat here. You can just stitch it in a little and then allow the pleat to now start after some. Like after a few inches so that's what i did here i also did the same thing on the other side 
so if you want you can stitch it on top if you want you can stitch it from underneath it before you join the band to this so that's basically what i did here this is what the front looks like you see the front i didn't change anything i left it the way it is because it's perfect but at the bot is giving a lot of fabric on top of my board so i had to go back in and pull it so this is what mine looks like here you see after this big dad that i took in now it's giving it a better cup so that's basically it. thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video guys please like share and subscribe and once again you see the neckline here if i wanted to stop if i wanted to use the clip one all i have to do is just cut off my band at this point here cut off this neckline at this point here put in a clip here put in the clip here and pin it up this excess will be here and it will stop but i just wanted to elongate it and make it into a tie so that's why it's this way